This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, uh, this lecture is on uh, accounting standard number 38, intangible assets. Uh, and I mentioned the difference between tangible and intangible assets uh, when we went through the chapter on depreciation. That tangible assets are ones we can touch. So the normal ones, machines, buildings, uh, motor vehicles and so on. And we dealt with all of that. Those uh, non-current assets appear on the statement of financial position and we depreciate. Intangible assets are ones that we can't touch. I'll give you examples of things like patents. Uh, and the two types you need to be aware of are uh, goodwill. And more importantly for the exam, uh, what we call research and development. Uh, now, first of all, goodwill. Uh, again, I did mention this before, goodwill. Uh, suppose I was buying another company. And I... Uh, I'm buying all their machines and whatever else. Uh, and I say, oh, um, I think their machines are worth 20,000. Uh, I think their buildings are worth 100,000. They've obviously got other assets. Uh, I'm not going to list everything. Let's say they, I think they're worth 10. So I think that tangible assets are worth 130,000. That's what I think they're worth. And I'll try and see if I can buy it for 130. But uh, if it's a successful business, if the business has already got loads of customers and is making profits, then of course, buy out, buy out their business, buy their machines, build it up. And I'll immediately start making profits because all the customers are there. And so I'm cer almost certainly going to have to pay more. Maybe after negotiating, I end up paying 200,000. And why am I paying more? Because it's already a successful business and I'll make profit straight away. The extra I'm paying, we call goodwill. And it's an extra asset. Just like I bought machines, I've been prepared to pay 20 for them and have an asset. And the goodwill, I've paid 70 for it. It is an asset. And so uh, we are allowed, when we've actually paid for goodwill in this way, we are allowed to show it as a non-current asset we can capitalise. Uh, capitalise means show it as a non-current asset. So, you know, the 200 you paid, uh, credit cash, we debit machines with uh, 20,000. We debit buildings with 100. Uh, we debit goodwill with 70. So you can capitalise it. Uh, now, there's a limit to what you can be asked in your exam. It's later exams, it does get messier. Because in later years, you have to check, you know, is it still worth 70? Are we going to reduce it, amortise it? Amortise is another word for depreciation. Uh, but all I'm concerned about is the fact that we can capitalise it. However, only when it's goodwill, we've bought here I bought another company, I actually paid an extra 70 for the goodwill. Uh, forget buying another company though. I could say my company. My company. The assets are only worth 130. But I know it's worth a lot more because of goodwill. Well, I cannot stick in my statements goodwill. How do I know the true value? We can't. You can only show goodwill if you've actually paid for it, like buying another company. 
You can't show it uh, when you haven't paid for it, when you've just grown it yourself. You know, I'm sure my business is worth more than the tangible assets. I'm sure it is, but I'll never know until I try and sell it. We can't show it. So, uh, just to make sure you're with me, purchased goodwill. We can capitalise, it appears as a non-current asset in the statement of financial position. Non-purchased goodwill. We cannot. Non-purchased, the fact that I think my business is worth more, that there is goodwill. Well, I haven't paid for it, we can't show it. Okay, that's enough there. Uh, more important than your exam, research and development. Uh, let me explain what we're talking about. Suppose uh, we're a company ma making drugs, medicine drugs. And now we've got a team of scientists um, working on trying to find a cure for heart problems. They're doing research. It's costing me a lot of money, you know, I'm paying all their wages and everything. So I've spent, on all the wages, I've spent half a million this year on these scientists who are trying to find uh, a new medicine. It's a lot of money, and if they do find a new medicine, we start earning a lot. And so companies say, oh, well, can't we show it as an asset? You know, I spent all this money, but just as other companies buy machines in order to produce products, I'm paying half a million in wages to find a new product. And they want to show it uh, as an asset. Well, the rule is with pure research, you can't. What research is, is where you're looking for a new product. But of course, you know, looking to find a cure for some heart problems. Although you're looking for a new product, you don't know what it is. What will result? And of course, you don't even know if you find one. It might not result in anything. And so, I may have spent half a million on um, wages. We cannot show it as an asset. We must show it as an expense in the statement of profit or loss. Okay, what we spent must show it as an expense. However, that's research when you're looking for a new product, but you don't know what it is you'll end up with. The other bit, though, is something called development expenditure. And what this is, suppose we have found a new drug. We know there's this new drug which will help the heart problem. We still need to do some a bit more work on it, just sorting out uh, what size of tablets and that sort of thing. But we know we've got this new product and we know we're going to be able to sell it. Or car makers. We've decided on a new car we're going to make. Uh, a car with eight doors or something. Uh, it's not finished yet because, you know, we need to carry on with the design and uh, sort a few things out. But we know what the product's going to be. It's going to be an eight-door car. We know we'll be able to make it and sell it. Well, that is development. Uh, development is where we know what the product will be.
Uh, this is expenditure, getting it ready for sale. So again, I may be paying half a million in wages and things to these people who are getting this car ready for sale, for development. Well, the rule is we must capitalise. And remember, capitalise means show it as a non-current asset on the statement of financial position. Provided... And there's a list of things. Now, I'm not going to write them all down because they're on the second page of the note. Look at it with me. Development expenditures should be capitalised and shown as an asset on the statement of financial position if, and only if, the following conditions apply. There must be an identifiable product. So we know what the product's going to be. <coughs> it's not, oh, we might find a new drug or we might not. We know there's going to be this new car. Uh, we must have the resources to be able to complete the development. We must know we are going to be able to finish and start producing this car. There should be an identified market. So we have to be sure we are going to be able to sell it. So we've done our research. We know what this car is going to be. We know people are going to be prepared to buy it. We know we're going to be able to make it. And of course, we must be able to measure how much we spent. Well, provided those conditions apply, we capitalise it, we show it as an asset on the statement of financial position. And we amortise, I mentioned before, amortise is another word for depreciation. But when it's tangible assets, we depreciate. When it's intangible, we call it amortisation. Uh, we amortise in line with the pattern of income. Sounds messy and it's not, again, really your problem. But, you know, if I think this car is going to be, uh, and we'll just be able to sell it for five years, then as I start selling it, uh, we'd amortise over five years, um, whatever. If the conditions aren't fulfilled, so if any one of those... Uh, doesn't apply if we're not certain we're going to be able to sell it, if we're not certain we're going to be able to make it, then we must show it in the statement of profit and loss as an expense. Uh, so there we are. Research always is an expense in statement of profit and loss. Development must be shown as an asset on the statement of financial position, provided those four conditions apply. Now, finally, just one trick to look for in the exam. Suppose we are doing research. Uh, you know, we've got this team of uh, scientists looking for a new drug. Uh, and the salaries, I've paid half a million. Uh, they also needed, obviously, uh, a room to work in. A laboratory, um, so the cost of their building. Cost me 100,000. Well, watch for this as a trick. We're only here talking about intangible assets. Their salaries are intangible, and so it's that which we're looking at and are. Oh, here, because it's research, we do not capitalise, it's simply an expense. However, the building is a tangible asset. And so whether you've bought the building in order to do research or whether you've bought it in order to do development, irrelevant. If it's a tangible asset, of the building, any machines or equipment we need to buy, then that you do capitalise and you depreciate. Uh, be careful. Whatever the reason, if you've bought an, a tangible asset, it's a non-current asset, you depreciate it. 
we're only talking about here about the intangible bits, things like the wages of the people doing the research or doing the developing. Uh, disclosure requirements, uh, you can have a read of that yourself, uh, but what's important for the exam is what I've spoken through. 